you know, I love me some budget custom mechs, and with more and more coming out, it shows the growth of the market with premium features becoming more affordable and accessible. And yeah, I know this starts at 120 USD, so obviously it's still a lot of money and you gotta buy a bunch more stuff to finish it off, but being relative, it is on the low end. Also, damn, this case is nice. Has that nice soft touch feel. Don't know what it's called, not cultured enough, but it's nice. And a big heads up, this is a prototype unit, not the final, so my contents and the board itself may be different to the final units. I received two plates. I have a polycarbonate plate and an aluminium plate in the board itself. And here it is, the Iki 68 Aurora, which is in group buy until the 10th of this month, aka like now. Pretty cool looking, and this continues the recent trend of cheaper plastic boards like the Ramakara, NK65, KBD67 Lite, and all that sort of stuff. However, there are a few unique features with the Iki. Alrighty, let's take it apart with a bunch of hex screws on the bottom. Here's the top piece, and the whole case is moulded polycarbonate. Uh, good to see we have metal inserts, so not just threaded plastic, should be nice and durable. And this is a gasket mount keyboard, with 16 gasket pieces on the top and another 16 on the bottom casing. They're just friction fit and are quite small and narrow. The ones I have are silicone which are firm and rubbery, however there will also be poron available which is a softer foam. We also have the case badge which can be easily removed and replaced with different ones which they also offer, uh, which look pretty sweet. This one is pretty cool though. And looking at the bottom polycarb piece, and here we are presented with a bunch of options. Of course, uh, a heap of silicone here, all of which are optional. Removing the first piece, and that gives us space for an optional brass weight to give it more heft, and it'll change the sound a little bit, and we can see the standups there. And then another small silicone piece, which I'm assuming is for the battery, uh, because there is a wireless version of the Iki which starts at 155 USD. However, you will need to supply your own battery. And then the last and largest silicone piece is just a dampener like the rest and depending on what you want, you can leave it or take it out. Here's the casing with the rest of the gaskets, but this has a bit of a twist to it. Each pair of these gasket pieces are removable and these chips are what the plate sits atop. So you can decide on how many points the plate sits on and in theory, the less you have, the more flexible it will be. Uh, you will of course still need something there and probably, probably a symmetrical setup. And I guess you wouldn't want too much flex where the USB port is. Anyway, for now, we'll keep them all in. Here's the piece to be fitted to the aluminium plate and I have the Fairbanks hotswap PCB and it's one that does allow for various layouts including split spacebar so we have a bunch of sideways and upside down sockets to allow for that. Unscrewing the PCB from the plate and it reveals the mid silicone piece which too is optional uh, depending on whether you want it firmer or more muted and such. And the alu plate, again proto not the final and this one has an ISO enter amongst other things and this is the configuration I went with first with split spacebar uh, but yeah it was pretty scuffed with the mid silicone piece um, the silicone just didn't fit with the ISO stabs so stuff that let's just use the polycarbonate plate which allows for everything. This time I went with a very standard config which we don't often see with smaller form factors with the full right shift but the silicone piece was still not really compatible. I, I just chopped off this bit uh, that was interfering with the enter stab and we're good. Honestly, hot swap is such a godsend, it's just too easy. And uh, the switches I have are lilacs, which are a JWK linear, and my buddy Hong Hobbies generously gave these to me to try out, uh, the legend lubed and filmed. But then I stopped and remembered the DIY logo LED thing, 
uh, thought I might as well try it out and or try and show it. Uh, my silicon piece is just a solid grey, but the final will be white for the light to shine through. So uh, I'll just cut the silicone, no worries. Then I got a diffuse it, so I just cut some thin white cardboard and you get something like this. And here's an example of what they did. You can do you can do something like that, which is a little difficult by hand, or you can do the inverse way where you just like draw something in black. Alrighty, that's all done. Now we can put it back together and we come to the next issue. If we look close at the case, the gaskets are higher than the threads and being silicone, there's hardly any compression. Um, and this is the same for the bottom. So when we screw the two halves together, being plastic, it bends at these points like so. And it's not that I'm over tightening or something. It's just generally you screw it all the way in. But with this, you have to stop when you feel a bit of resistance, otherwise it'll deform. I suspect with poron gaskets being a foam, it won't be as bad because it compresses, but yeah, we're kind of left with a bit of a gap. Keycaps. Honestly, mint is a bit tough to match. Not that, not that there's any rules, but the case is translucent and does allow for a complete basic standard layout, so, so I thought why not use one of these super cheap keycap sets, translucent keycap sets that I have. And these are ridiculously cheap, like six bucks plus shipping on AliExpress. Probs can get them cheaper elsewhere. And yeah, it's kind of staggering when you think about just how much uh, we can spend on keyboard stuff. Like all the Iki 68 Aurora vids out right now probably have a GMK set on them or similar. Nothing wrong with that, um, just an interesting thought that you can get like 20 of these for one premium key set. But me being me, I had this sitting in front of me for a while and I thought, I thought it looked really cool and all, but also it could be better. And honestly, I hate myself sometimes because this group buy is ending very soon and this straight up took me a good while, but whatever, gotta do it. And finally, here it is, the Iki 68 Aurora Mint Edition Custom Mechanical Keyboard. And damn, what a build. I, I did so much to get to this point, but look at that. I'm happy I went that touch further because, yeah, it looks pretty good to me. Haven't really seen something like this, this sort of combo, especially the keycaps. I tried and guessed with the legend colors to somewhat match the case. And translucent keycaps like these are pretty much always blank. I've seen Tai Hao have something like this, but being double shot, you still have that opaque layer. Um, also because these are custom and I can do I can do what I want, I decided to theme it a little bit on Red Velvet's Joy since I won't do a dedicated episode to her and I'll eventually have a keyboard for each member and it just makes me love the board more. I love the colour of the case too, it just brightens up your desk and lends well to translucent plastic. And I love this aesthetic where we can see through and into the case, we can see the metal standoffs here, and with all the gasket pieces there's a bunch of ribbing around the case. Otherwise, it's quite a simple shape, sizable bezels, and looking at the side profile it's clean with a 6.5 degree incline, nice and comfortable. 
We do have this interchangeable case badge and I will eventually change it to maybe have Joy's signature to tie the whole board together. And then the LED logo thingo. I didn't do the greatest job. I think it's letting too much light through being a big shape. So I'll, I guess I'll change that too. But yeah, that's a feature you don't need to use. I'm a fan of this kind of 65%, which is the same as the Vamilo 68 or Maya. It's a bit wider than usual, but it does allow for that long right shift and 1.25U keys on the bottom row, which let me use this key set. Uh, but then it has so many options, even with hot swap, which we don't often see. There's just about a split option for whatever. So split spacebar, backspace, shift keys, all of that. So you do you. Alrighty, let's give it a listen. I'll start with the default config and then try to remove some of the gasket chips. Awesome. First of all, good work on the switches, mate. They feel great. And I'm a fan of how the board feels and sounds with all the configs I tried. Remember, just polycarbonate plate here, and by default, it already had a good amount of flex. The bottom out was quite pleasant, not overly clacky or harsh. Uh, the silicone packed everywhere here, so it has that typical dense and contained sound and feel. Removing the side gasket chips, I honestly don't think I felt or even heard much of a difference, but then 
Removing the middle gasket chips definitely brought in more thock to the spacebar, and of course how the spacebar sounds is a huge part of how the keyboard sounds when typing, but overall it was a slightly thockier and deeper sound, and a slightly softer bottom out. Then just having the side gaskets, I don't know, it sounds pretty similar to me. Uh, maybe a touch deeper, and in theory there should be more flex towards the middle, but yeah, I don't know, it was very similar. Uh, but let me know if you can hear a difference. And then finally, I removed the case silicone pieces that go under the PCB, and that made a huge difference. Much thockier, more depth, and you can hear the room it has. A bit hollow, as expected, and the sound did spill a little bit onto the table, whereas the other configs were all very much contained within the keyboard. And this also has the most flex, and again, you want to be careful with the USB port bending like that, but I really did enjoy this config. For me, I reckon maybe the third configuration was a pretty good balance. Maybe that, but without the case silicone pieces, but I definitely feel that at least removing the gasket chip underneath the spacebar really brings out the thock and depth, and I like that. But yeah, this is just what I tried. There's so much more that you can do, more stuff with the gasket chips. Uh, Poron instead of silicone gaskets would be different. Removing the silicone piece between the PCB and plate, the case silicone pieces, different plate materials, and adding a brass weight, all of this stuff will change your experience. But the encouraging thing is that the default setup was good, I liked it, and everything after that I liked even more. And that's the Icky 68 Aurora. There was a lot of work put into this board and many issues that I can put down to being a prototype unit like the cooked silicone piece, the cooked PCB, the alloy plate, all that stuff is fine, it will be fixed, but the screwing together of the case may need to be looked at, uh, but otherwise I love the customizability of the board, how you can personalize the look of it, and of course the removable gasket pieces is cool, always good to see something a bit different. And finally, back to the start, this is a budget custom. Uh, this run, however, will be cheaper than the following runs, and you know they will run way more because these molds cost money, and it's value. Personally, I've tried the NK65 and Ramakara for these sorts of boards. I felt like the NK65 wasn't too far off a kind of normal pre-built in feel, but the value is unreal with that. And the Kara has the HHKB layout, which isn't for everyone, like myself and I personally prefer how the Icky sounds and feels, personally. So I think it's a, it's a real solid option, and I'm keen to get a wireless PCB in here, so I might actually use it. Love you, Joy, and thank you.